feast of the Jews. And Jesus went out to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethsaida, having five porches. In this lay a great multitude of important folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole, or for whosoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie, and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Would thou be made whole? The important man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another stepped down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. Amen. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him, That was cured. It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. He answered them, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple, and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Last but not the least. Sorry. Yeah, the 15. Sin no more. Let a white thing come unto thee. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. Amen. 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 <coughs> This is a word of the living God unto us in this very moment. As I used to say, as the sun shines in every country, and the moon also appears in every nation or country, so is the truth also triumph so mighty. As the sun shines and the moon also appears, so is the truth also makes one a winner. The truth makes one to walk in the line of the living God. The truth translates captivity because they are not understanding of the truth. They lack understanding of the word. And at this one, once again, I'm here to present unto you the truth. Uh, which is Jesus Christ, hallelujah. Amen. The Bible may not understand the book of Revelation, the chapter 5, he said, the lamb that was slain has obtained unto us power. So the truth also caused one to be have power to liberate from every form of darkness. Amen. Amen. I'm trying my best to speak one after the other, because when I get there, you can understand. Amen. Amen. The lamb that was slain unto us has obtained for us Power, honor, riches, glory. It was seven good fold which has been given unto us. So when you know this truth, it caused you to be liberated from anything that you are going through. Can I get your amen? Yeah. Anywhere the truth is, there is light. The Bible made us understand that we are the source of this world. We are the light also like of this world. That he that is in us is the truth. So anywhere we only go also, we show for this very light which is in us. Which is the truth which I'm presenting unto you once again this morning. The truth is a universal commodity. or universal currency. It has the same value everywhere. Anywhere there is truth, there is light. It has the same value anywhere. Just as the moon appears in every country, so is the truth also appears anywhere you go and it costs one to be a winner. I have come to understand something that the main purpose and aim of God for mankind on this very earth is no money. 
money is good, and we have prosperity messages or preachers that preach prosperity, which is good for some of the ministry. But the main aim and the purpose of God for mankind is holy. Yes. And you understand that the purpose of God for mankind is holy. But you know that in the two words of God, when preaching man, in it God don't have riches in it. But rather, when you seek Him first, when you make you holy, but the Bible says we were created in His image. In his likeness for us to be like him. So he that we created in his image did not give unto us riches. But it is some of the part of the blessing which we have when we walk in how he has he said we should walk in his life. He is holy. He said, I am holy, therefore be holy. Without I came to understand that holiness to me is not a difficult thing for one to live by. It, as I stand here and I say, God is going to bless you, you shout, Amen. Yeah, amen. Uh, but God says, Be ye holy, for I am holy. For that we don't shout, Amen. But we see it yeah. to be difficult for us yeah. to say. Yeah. God is going to make you rich, that we shout, I receive it. <laughs> From the man of God. God is going to open way for you, we shout, Amen. But that's from the mouth of God that be he holy, for I am holy. So without that phrase, make me understand that the, the mandate of God for creating us is not causing us rich, but for us to live and function as he is. He said, Look, I've made thee unto Pharaoh, I've made thee unto the world, I've made thee to those that don't know me, God. So you present God on this earth and the light. That which is in you will need to show forth and shine for people to see Amen. which the Lord has deposited in you. Amen. I repeat, holiness in the Christendom is one of the easiest things for one to do. When one hears the word holy, what comes in mind that we think it's sexual immorality, that which is what comes to mind when you say one is not living right. There is more to it. Holiness comes in different, different ways. And that causes me to understand is the most easiest thing for you to do. If you know the word of God and it dwells in you, you walk by it and your life becomes perfect. Hallelujah. It translates you from the kingdom of darkness to the place where he has prepared for you. When one refuses to be holy, when one refuses to be live pure, when one refuses to walk in the light of God, he walks in darkness. And the most dangerous part of it is that as I'm standing under this very light, seeing you see me very clearly, when it's night, where the light is, I see. You also see where the light is. But you can't see from afar where there's darkness. You can only see where the limit of the light shows. But he that is in darkness sees you the light from afar. So you, that you have made God on this earth to walk like God, walk like Him, function like Him, walk in His precept. If you do something which is not right, which is not holy, those are in darkness sees you from afar, uh -huh. and your life reflect onto them. How you call yourself born again Christian, but you did that? It's not about sexual immorality. Amen. 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 Sometimes, for me, I call it the mirror moment. Now, God sometimes releases us to a place which we force ourselves to do something which causes us to walk in this very darkness. Now, God can liberate us to do something on our own 
But at the end, we fall ourselves, or we entangle ourselves with things which cause us to be in darkness. In the garden, the Bible made me understand that everything was given unto man liberally, freely, given unto man. In the book of Genesis, made me understand that God wants us to work in how He was and how He's working. So in the garden, the Bible said there was a water, a river that parted into four heads. And one of the river has this special stone. Gold, pure marbles. And Eve, if you want to bath, she wants to bath, she swim in a swimming pool that was made up with pure gold. Mm. But God said, Don't go and touch and eat from this very tree. So it's not about money. God wants you to live pure. You can have an overflow account, it's good, yes. But God wants you to live pure for that overflow to work. Rather, we change worth than changing holiness. Because our man said, let us understand that it's so difficult for us to live by. If I hear young man boy this morning, I'm here to tell you holiness is very easy for one to do. If your mind is twin and changed, to a place which he calls you to understand that it's very difficult for you to do when you have no understanding of the word. The Bible says, my people are praying for lack of knowledge. I present once again unto you the truth this morning. Amen. In a smart you stand before the mirror. It is a reflection of ourselves for us to change from the darkness in which we are in to walk in his way. We come in a place where we meet the mirror moment. That our lifestyle needs to be a, a, a shadow to those that don't know Christ for them to also to walk in his precepts. But why does God release us to do things which later to be entangled us to walk in darkness? Sometimes this very thing comes in two folds. I don't want to go there. The Bible says we rest not against flesh and blood. So it comes in twofold. One is the external mirror. Two is the internal mirror. The external sometimes we may understand that our friends, our relatives, our friends that are around us, which cause us to sin and cause us not to walk in holiness as God wants us to walk. And we blame them. So Paul says that we will rest not against flesh and blood because indeed there are those that you are in the world with them which you come into Christ now your life has become a threat unto them because they see from afar and they don't want you to come closer to them. So they try their best to change you. Because they see from afar and you are in the light. And your life becomes a threat unto them. So when Paul says, rest not against flesh and blood, that those are in darkness that see you, they make sure they do everything to bring you down. They try to pull you back for you to miss the mark of God. They try to destroy the ways of God in your life. That what God has said concerning your life, after being born again, they try to bring it low. Because they see you from afar, you don't see them. In the night, just light your light, let your light stand afar. You see the light, you see the light from afar. But go in the light and see whether you can see something from the dark, no. But if you have an understanding of the word of God, which is the truth, the lamb that was slain, which obtained unto us the power, is Jesus Christ. And I present unto you once again this one, Jesus Christ, he is the truth. And when you know this very truth, the Bible says, by the truth and sell it not. You know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So, when not the truth, not just speaking, but not Jesus Christ, and your life shall be set free from the force of darkness. Amen. 
Know Jesus Christ. Know who he is. Amen. Amen. And this inner one is sometimes what we ourselves we do. About our friends around us that try to put us down, we also is the inner mirror that we do which cause us to walk in darkness. So Paul said so in the book of uh, Romans in chapter 7, he said, anytime that he wanted to do good, anytime that he wanted to do what is right, in and around him, there's an ego that persists deep within him, within him, which causes you not to live right before God. That anytime that I want to do good, anytime that I don't want to do this, my inner man causes me to do what I don't want to do. What you don't want to do is what you do. You know, the good that you want to do, you do them not. But the evil and the bad thing that you want to do, that's what you do. And Paul said that anytime that he wanted to take a step of faith and do the right thing, there's an evil within him that caused him not to do. Amen. 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 Now to the book of John. For you to understand this very thing, you have to understand also that it is a challenge for us to come out from this very inner mirror and also come out from the outside one, those ones from the friends, and those that we also we do ourselves. The Bible says so, John says something. So many other things that you were not able to write, because if it was written, the Bible could not contain them. And I thank God that he did not leave what happened in the chapter 5 in Bethesda. The Bible says so that there was a feast in Jerusalem. A gathering, a tribulation was being held. And Jesus Christ was going to the city. Of Jerusalem, and for you to go to the city, the city once again is being surrounded by a wall. For you to pass through some of the gates of the wall and enter into the city. So he entered to a place where the sheep market was. And the Bible says, when he entered at some of the gates, there was a pool named Bethesda. And around the pool were five porches. And if you are in the Jesus days, it's like you've entered to the Bronto Sokoso of John Bosco. <laughs> there lie great multitude. Not because of the beauty of the water or the pool. Not because how the pool has been made. The Bible says so. There lie great multitude. Different people of different kinds of sickness with different kinds of melodies. Those that are shouting and shouting. Those that are crying and crying. Those that are mourning within them and mourning. Those that are their name also are dead. Different kinds of sickness. Those that are blind were dead. Those that were, were able to walk are dead. Like if you enter into a protoscoso of, of an hospital where people are in pain. And the Bible says so. They lie at the porches of the pool. I was wondering why, because the Bible made us understand that in a season there comes an angel of the living God that troubles the water. And anytime that he troubles the water, the race now began. And people who fall in first receive his or her healing. The Bible made me understand that there was a man that was having infirmity for 30 good, 38 good years. And this man has been there for 38 good years. I don't understand the man is in a place of healing. A place where the angel trouble the water, you will receive your healing. But he has been there for 38 good years and still remain the same, not being healed. 
The Bible would not show that the kind of sickness by the man, the Bible says, infirmity. This is sin. For 38 good years, he's a place of healing. For 38 good years, he's in pain, he's in motion. And he's still there without receiving healing. Oh, you think I'm still talking about the pool which is in Jerusalem? I just entered into the church. I don't understand that you come every Sunday to Sunday, every week to week, every month to month, every year to year, and you are still remaining the same of what you are going through. <coughs> Sunday to Sunday, week after week, month after month, 31st after 31st, and you still remain the same. Without changing. For 38 years, I don't know how many years you have been what you are going through. But the man has been in for 38 good years. 38 eight, eight years of sorrow. 38 years of pain. 38 years of barren. 38 years in that same old condition. At a place of healing. 38 years without transformation. So Jesus now came into the scene and asked a question that many people may say is somehow funny and silly question. Because you ask the man, do you want to be whole? Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be set free? But I tell you, as a man who is in a place where you know he's sick and you know that he wants healing, you know that he wants deliverance, you know that he wants to be set free, but he asks you, Do you want to be whole? Do you want to be liberated? Do you want to be set free? From what you are going through, I was wondering why Jesus asked that very question. Was that the man was functioning in a place where he doesn't need to function? He was comfortable in his comfort zone, in a place of healing, thinking the healing was in the pool. The Bible made me understand when Jesus asked him this question. The man was like, eh, you know, sir, uh, 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 any time that I, I wanted to enter into this very pool, uh, somebody come and step over me, somebody go before me. I, I have no one. But the question was, do you want to be whole? Do you want to live right? Do you want to live righteously? It's not this sister pushed me to this very lifestyle, you know, this brother made me do this. Do you want to be whole? And the man was like, I have no one. Do you want to be whole? I have no one to carry me, but 38 years, do you want to be whole? Because there's a difference between knowing to be whole and you wanted to be healed. The difference between you know that you need right, you know that you need to live righteously, and the difference between you know you want to be healed. Amen. Amen. So when we just read from the chapter 5, that one made me understand that the strongest and deepest demon that one can call, walk and walk against and work deeply to destroy, it's not those around us, but the demon within us, the demon of ourselves. But for 38 years, you want to be whole. But you're still in a place that weak demon within, within you, which caused you not to go for 38 good years. The strongest demon that we can ever fight 
is a demon of ourselves. You know, it's easy for us, for me to point finger that like, you this brother, you this sister, you this man, this my friend, my brother, you have done this, you have done that. But it's difficult for me myself to tell myself I did what is wrong. I can tell you that what you are doing is wrong so easily. I can point finger at you. Make sure that to let you know that what you did was wrong. But it's very difficult for me to tell myself that could do you are wrong. God bless you. God bless you. Jesus was standing right here. The pool is just right here. The man was in the middle. The question is like, do you want to be whole? Do you want to be set free? Do you want to be liberated? And the man contemplated what is going on. What comes in mind was the pool. He did not understand. Like Jesus was standing right here. The man at the middle. The pool right here. And Jesus Ask, do you want to be whole? What is the mouth on the plate of what? The question was, what it is it is of the pool? Jesus was standing right here. The man at the middle. And the, and the pool was here. And the question was like, do you want to be whole? And the man was thinking of how to get into the pool. Without knowing that, for, for one best way for one to live right before I live in God is not getting to the pool. At my, so somebody hear my voice, we are in the city of Torino where we have many churches which is called Bethesda Pentecostal Ministry where people think they can go in there and have their healing now. But what they don't know is that the healing is not in the pool. The healing is not in the church. The healing is drawing closer unto Jesus Christ. I'm not discouraging you this morning. The healing is not in the pool. But the healing is not in the church also. But the healing is one closer unto God. Because Jesus was standing here, the man at the middle, and the pool was here. Do you want to be whole? And he was thinking how to get into the pool. Because he said, anytime I want to get in, somebody comes in and step over me. I'll tell you the reason why we are in the city of Torino, Bethesda, Pentecostal ministry, everywhere. Now people think they can go in there and receive their healing. So they'll go in and join the choir. They'll go in and join the usher, ushering board. They'll go and join the men and food, women fellowship, trying to get their healing among other departments in the church. Are the poor. God bless you. God bless you. The healing is drawn closer unto Jesus Christ. Amen. He said, No one can come to the Father except through me. He said, I am the way. So drawing closer to Jesus Christ, you receive your healing. Healing was not in the pool. Healing was drawn closer unto Jesus Christ. Amen, 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 amen. 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 And somebody may, may, may be asking, you know, I can't ask you a question behind the pulpit, but uh, how can one draw closer unto Jesus Christ? Very good. <laughs> so simple. Hallelujah. Devote your time in prayer. Yes. Devoting your time in prayer. I don't understand. It is very hard for you to sink when you pray. It is very hard for you to remain bitter against your neighbor when you pray. Yes. Hallelujah. So if the Bible says pray without ceasing, it was telling you that when you make prayer, you're just sick, you draw closer unto me and things on this and you walk right before me. Hallelujah. Draw closer. Unto Jesus Christ through your prayer. Amen. It is very hard to have somebody within you when you pray. 
It's very hard for you to talk bad against your neighbor when you pray. God bless you. It is very hard for you to gossip about one another when you pray. I told you holiness is not about sexual immorality. Amen. 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 So one may be asking, uh, is this thing biblical that when you pray, uh, 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 you, you, you get yourself out from all these very things? Come on, go to the book of Acts, chapter 9. The Bible said there was a man by the name Saul. Yes. This man was not a yet a brother, but killing the people, killing the burden, killing the church daily, beating them to subjection, killing them, beating them. The Bible said in the chapter 9 of the book of Acts, that on his way to Damascus, and the end of the living God appeared unto him. Hallelujah. And this man got blind. Hallelujah. And the Bible says so. God tapped the shoulder of one brother by the name Ananias. And said, Ananias, go into Damascus. Uh, there is this man by the name Saul. Uh, and let us be called, who we call Paul. But the man is there who I want you to go and share my word with him. And Ananias was like, uh, God, but you know, uh, we know about this very man, how he has been killing the brethren, how he beat this brother, how he beat this one. And God said, no, shut up, just be quiet. Go. And Saul was complaining, you oh, know, how can I go? How can I go? Because this one will kill me also like that. And the Bible said, go, he is praying. Take time and read the book of Acts chapter 9, verse Hallelujah. 1 down. Then you understand that prayer costs one to be closer to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How can I know that He's holy when you pray? How can I know that I'll be here when you go down on your knees? How can I know that I will not have any bad relationship between my brother when you go down on your knees? Amen. Jesus was standing there, the poor was here, the man at the middle. Amen. This morning I present to you once again the truth. Hallelujah. Which you set you free. Amen. For you to be healed in Bethesda, it's not come to church, put on gray suits like me, put on blue thigh, but it's drawing closer unto God. God bless you. And the Bible says so, if you read about very well, Jesus did not answer the word and enter into the pool. Immediately, the man just took up his bed and started walking. I came to understand that one of the best ways for one to live righteous before the living God, for one to walk how God wants you to walk, for one to live right, is become obedient. Amen. The man did not change again. After he didn't take up the bed and walk. The man obeyed. You know, obedience has its own way of functioning. And disobedience also has its way of functioning. When you obey, you live right before God. When you obey, things become so smooth and so nice in your life. When you obey, your enemy becomes even at peace with you. When you obey, sickness flee away from your life. But when you disobey, it has its own way of working. When man disobeyed God in the garden, the Bible says so, and the line was caught. So disobedience will let us walk in darkness each and every day. It's very hard that you heard the word of God in Bethesda and you don't obey no you don't want to understand after the people of Israel being delivered from the land of Egypt into the promised land the Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter, chapter 6 from the verse 1 the Bible says and the people of Israel did evil and God now released them in the hands of the making in the hands of the, their enemy so when you disobey the word of God you fall into the trap of the enemy. Amen. Obedience comes with blessing. It comes with price. 
and disobedience also comes with its own price. Amen. When you disobey His word, when you disobey what He says, you know, sometimes we believers, we Christians, uh, we we say we obey. But how do you obey? By hearing his word and live by it. The word preached to unto you from the pulpit, behind the pulpit, it's not just mere formality, not just mere word of man when he's speaking. But it's there to translate us for you to obey and work immediately. To get your healing better, the Bible says so. Take up your bed and walk. Take up your bed and walk. When you obey, you do what he says do. That shall not still when you obey. That shall not convert your neighbor's wife to be yours when you obey. You know, this has, this has become like, uh, you know, this kind of holiness of thing that many churches don't preach. I'll I, I say the truth for you. Sell it not. When you obey, it's difficult for you to do things that is in the world. The Bible says in John chapter 2 that there was a wedding ceremony where Jesus and his disciples were being there, we were being invited. And they go to a place where the wine got finished. And the Bible says that the man of Jesus Christ came unto him and said, uh, uh, you know, uh, we, we lack, we lack, we lack wine, we lack the juice, we lack this. No, it is finished under the wedding. And he said unto her, woman, my time is not yet up. It is a mother because I am your God, I can't call you mother. So he said, woman, my time is not yet up. And she went to the servant and said, anything she tells you, do it. And that takes me to the 1988. You are wearing night into this very brand. Uh, just do it. Uh -huh. When you bring your tithe to the house of the living God, just do it. Amen. Be holy for I am holy. Just do it. Don't take what that will belongs to you. Just do it. Obedience set the man free. Amen. 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 If you read that kind of where the Bible says so after the man walking, he did not go anywhere. He just went straight to the temple. And those Pharisees that were there, and so you know today is that Sabbath day. You have no right for you to take your up your bed and walk. So who made you whole? Who caused you to be free? And many people are in the city that they are watching your lifestyle and they are going to question you about your own deeds, trying to get some fault from you. And the most funny part is that the, the man don't know who made him who. Oh, wow. The Bible said, they asked him who made him. He said, I don't know. So when he went to the temple, for Jesus Christ, for you to know that I am the one that made you whole, Jesus Christ walked to the man and said, listen, you have to be whole. Make sure you see no more. Now when he saw that it was Jesus, he went back again to the Pharisees, to the Pharisees and told them it was Jesus that made him whole. Hallelujah. I, 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 I cannot stand here this morning and tell you about Jesus Christ without introducing unto you who made me whole. You cannot be my friend without me telling you who made me who I am today. He, he went back unto them and said, he said, it was Jesus that made him. It was Jesus that brought healing into my life. It was Jesus that set you free from what you are going through. Yes. And you can't be my friend without me telling you about Jesus Christ. You can't get close to me 
enjoy my smile. When play with your children, when I'm telling you who made me smile to your children, it's Jesus. Amen. And it is He that I'm presenting unto you this morning. Amen. By the truth, Hallelujah. sell it not. Hallelujah. And if you read that Bible, the Bible made us understand that the man did not keep that unto himself. They went there to tell them who the person was. For one to walk right before the living God, it's about testifying about Jesus Christ to those that don't know him. To sit people down and tell them about Jesus Christ. Tell them how he made you whole. How he transformed you. How he has made who you are today. You can't keep quiet all that unto yourself. The man went back and told them it was Jesus. He went back and said, it was this man that made me whole. And the Bible said, you have to be whole. Make sure you sin no more. To so somebody don't disobey the word of God this morning unto your life. The people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the living God. And God released them into the hand of their own enemies. I want you to take your time when you get to the house. As you are reading the book of Acts chapter 9. So read Judges chapter 6. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, uh, I don't want to say this too, but uh, you know, I, I, I am a uh, Milanista, you know, I support Milan. Uh, I, I love my team so much, I talk about Milan anywhere I go. Uh, though I, 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 don't, I, I, I take time uh, off from the TV by watching their matches, but uh, all the same, I love Milan. I, I talk about Milan anywhere I go. You know, sometimes I meet pastor and uh, he will tell me, your team is going far. I, 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 I'm always telling Milan. I, I, I love Milan so much. It's my team. <laughs> they still me, they will still go to CRP. But I love Milan so much. I, I, I cannot join Napoli. I cannot join Juventus. I, 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 I cannot join Inter. I, I, I cannot join any other team. I, I, I love Milan so much. In as much that I love Milan, and I don't want to leave Milan for any other thing. So I love Jesus Christ. Now don't you leave Jesus Christ for any other thing. But I want you also to love Jesus Christ without leaving Jesus Christ for any other thing. I talk about Milan. I talk about Jesus Christ to hate my brother. I talk much about Jesus Christ to hate my sister. I talk much about his love to hate one another. I talk about his grace to be bitter and sorrow. I talk about Jesus Christ for this for somebody. Talk about Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So for you to receive all this very healing, talk about Jesus. Amen. In the chapter 4 of John, my time is up, I'm leaving, don't worry. In the chapter 4 of John, the Bible says so when Jesus was sitting, was sitting at the wall of Joseph, and there was a woman that came back to fresh water. Uh, a Samaritan woman, the Bible made her understand after Jesus Christ telling her what she was going to, what she was being in, and who she was with. She went back again into the city. Into the place where people see her to be different things together and talk about Jesus Christ. Amen. You cannot be a member of, of Christian Family Pentecostal Church without talking about Jesus. Healing is not in the pool. Healing is not in the choir. Healing is not in the ushering board. Healing is not in the men and women fellowship. Our healing is not in the youth. Our healing is drawing closer unto Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Amen.